Hi students, today we are going to learn about iron. Minerals that are present in the human body at less than 0.05% levels, they are defined as micro minerals or trace elements. One of the essential micro mineral require, required by our human body is iron. In the year 1800, scientist Lacanu identified the presence of iron in the metalloprotein hemoglobin. Iron is essential for synthesis of hemoglobin and general metabolism. Human body has 2.5 to 4 gram of iron and the amount of iron present is dependent on various factors like gender, age, nutritional status and health in general and iron stores. By the end of this session, the students will be able to understand about the distribution and transport of iron in the body. They will also be able to gain knowledge about absorption and factors favoring and hindering absorption. They will know the food sources of iron, recommended dietary allowances and deficiency of iron and also the toxicity caused due to excess iron. Now first let us look into the distribution of iron in our body. Iron is stored in the reticuloendothelial system and the hepatocyte normally and the total body iron varies with age and gender. Iron stores at birth is that is the neonates have around 75 milligram per kg out of which 60% of this iron is acquired in the third trimester. The neonates born to iron deficient mother have lower iron stores and they are at a higher risk of iron deficiency. There is rapid growth between birth and the adolescent period and blood volume increases during this time. The iron supply is very important during this period and children are at a higher risk of developing iron deficiency. In men, the iron stores after adolescence increase gradually with age and they have about 35 to 45 milligram per kg of iron while women have while women have 20 to 25 milligram of iron the iron content in women gradually rises after menopause menstruation underweight and reduced hemoglobin levels are the reasons for less amount of iron in females all iron in the body is bound with protein and cells require iron. Next we will look into the iron cycle. Body iron has four compartments and the movement of iron occurs between these compartments and this is known as the iron cycle. The first one is the heme containing oxygen transport protein. Hemoglobin has about two third of the total body iron and also the myoglobin. Next is the storage compartments where about one fourth of the body iron in the form of ferritin and hemosiderin is stored and ferritin iron is more readily available than hemosiderin. Third one is the transport compartment. Small fraction of the body iron stores is bound to transferrin in plasma. Non-transferrin bound iron is toxic and seen in conditions of iron overload when the iron binding capacity of transferrin is exceeded. The fourth one is the iron containing enzymes, cytochromes, catalase, peroxidase and ribonuclease reductase are the iron containing enzymes. Now this flow chart will show you the approximate distribution of iron in the body. Have a look into this flow chart and also this diagram depicts the iron storage in our body. We will look into the absorption of the iron. Iron absorption is the result of the complex mechanism that occur directly in the bloodstream. The absorption process takes place in all parts of the intestinal tract with the exception of the colon. Greatest absorption occurs in duodenum with the amount decreasing from jejunum to ileum. Iron movement through the intestinal cell is unidirectional. In humans, iron is efficiently absorbed in the ferrous state than in the ferric form. 
iron in food occurs in several forms and differ in the absorption by the body. The dietary iron present in food is in the ferric form and reducing substances change this ferric form to the ferrous form. Hemoglobin and myoglobin molecules present in animals has about 40% of the total body iron which is called as heme iron and this is absorbed twice as efficiently as simple elemental iron which is known as the non-heme iron. Animal flesh, egg and milk as well as some vegetables, grains and other plant foods also contain non-heme iron. The difference in the absorption of heme and non-heme iron makes the animal flesh a rich source of dietary iron taking into account both its iron content as well as the increased efficiency of the absorption of the heme iron. Consumption of heme iron and non-heme iron together increases the non-heme iron absorption. Non-heme iron absorption is facilitated by a protein factor present in meat, fish and poultry. This factor contains amino acids such as cysteine which binds iron to increase absorption. The absorption of non-heme iron present in the meal can be improved by eating vegetables and grain products along with non-vegetarian food. Organic acids like vitamin C increases non-heme iron absorption by adding an electron to the ferric form which yields the ferrous form. Vitamin C forms a complex called a chelate with ferric increasing absorption. Hydrochloric acid present in gastric juice reduces to ferrous form. Ferrous iron is absorbed better than the ferric iron as it crosses the mucous layer of small intestine readily and reaches the brush border of intestinal absorptive cells. They ferric has an electron remote thus reforming ferrous before it enters absorptive cells. In the cell membrane of the brush border of the absorptive cells, ferrous ion is bound to a receptor protein called membrane ion binding protein which transfers it into the cell. The absorption of heme ion is influenced by the ion stores in the body. Hydrolysis of heme ion from the globin portion of hemoglobin or myoglobin must be prior to the absorption. The heme contains iron and porphyrin ring that is absorbed intact into the mucosal cell of the small intestine, particularly in the duodenum and further used by the intestinal cell or for the transport and used by other body tissues. Acid present in the stomach plays an important role by promoting the conversion of ferric to ferrous and by solubilizing non-heme iron for absorption of iron. The decreased production of stomach acid which is a condition present in elderly people lower the iron absorption and as well their body iron stores. Heme ion follows a different absorptive process. This absorption occurs directly into absorptive cells after globin that is the protein fraction has been removed. Once inside the absorptive cells the ion is released from the heme portion. Students we saw the absorption and there are certain factors which will hinder the absorption of ion like the presence of phytates, oxalates and excessive amounts of inorganic phosphate reduce the iron absorption. The intake of fiber above 35 gram per day causes the fiber compounds to bind iron which results in the decrease in absorption of iron. Not only fiber, other polyphenols like tannins found in tea and Similar substances found in coffee also reduce iron absorption. The rate of absorption of iron is also affected by the magnitude of the iron store in the body and the erythropoiesis. The other minerals, phosphorus, calcium and zinc, they can also serve as inhibitors of absorption.
that is inhibitors of iron adsorption. Calcium supplements greater than 300 mg per day affects iron adsorption. Absorption increases when iron stores are also low in the body and they become greater and affects the heme ion absorption more than the non heme ion during the iron deficiency. So, till now we were learning about the iron absorption in the body. Now, students look into this flow chart. This flow chart shows the iron absorption taking place in the body in a stepwise process. This table gives the factors which serve as inhibitors and competitors of iron absorption. As we saw, some phytates and tannins act as inhibitors and other minerals act as competitors and the facilitators of iron absorption are the ascorbic acid and the amino acids and also iron deficiency will help in better absorption. Certain food substances inhibit iron absorption. Can you name some food substances which can inhibit iron absorption as we discussed earlier? Yes, foods with polyphenolic compounds, cereals, high fiber cereals like sorghum and oats, green leafy vegetables such as spinach and spices and beverages like tea, coffee, cocoa and wine will interfere with iron absorption and iron absorption is reduced almost up to 11 percent if we take a cup of tea along with our meal. Foods rich in phytic acid that is bran foods interfere. Cow's milk due to the presence of calcium and casein content interfere with iron absorption. The factors which facilitate iron absorption or the foods which help are ascorbic acid rich foods like citrus fruits, broccoli and other green leafy vegetables and foods containing the muscle protein. Fermented foods also aid in iron absorption since they reduce the phytate content of the diet. Now after learning about the absorption, now let us learn about the storage of iron in our body. Iron is stored either as ferritin or hemosiderin and these two are non-heme compounds in the liver, spleen and bone marrow ranging from about 1 to 2 gram. Iron is first stored as ferritin which is withdrawn when iron is required by the bone marrow. Hemosiderin is more stable and is not always available to the body. The iron is stored in the reticuloendothelial cells and this is derived from the pagocytosis of red blood cells and degradation of hemoglobin. Ferritin and hemosiderin are designed for the reversible storage of iron. Small amounts of ferritin or in the form of apoferritin is found in the plasma. Constant degradation and resynthesis of ferritin takes place thus providing an intracellular iron pool. Equilibration between serum and tissue ferritin occurs and therefore serum ferritin can be used as an index of body iron stores. Normal serum ferritin concentration exceeds 12 microgram per liter for adult females and 15 microgram per liter for adult males. Next about hemosiderin. This hemosiderin is a kind of polymer of ferritin micelles metabolically less active and this is another iron storage protein a degradation product of ferritin. The content of iron in hemosiderin is as high as 50 percent. The ratio of ferritin to hemosiderin in the liver varies according to the level of iron stored in the organ with ferritin predominating at lower iron concentrations and hemosiderin at higher concentrations. Although iron in hemosiderin can be labelized to supply free iron, the rate at which iron is released is slower when compared to that of the ferritin. Now, next we will be looking into the transport of iron. Iron in the intestinal mucosal cells or stored in the liver may be transferred into the blood for transport to other tissues. Release of iron stores require reducing substances such as niacin, riboflavin and vitamin C. 
oxidation of iron to enable binding to transferrin for transport to tissues require ceruloplasmin. The amount of iron taken up by the tissues depends on the degree of saturation of transferrin with the rate of iron delivery being greater. The ferric iron storage form must be reduced to ferrous in order to cross the plasma membrane. In the blood, iron in ferric form is reoxidized to iron ferrous by the enzyme ferroxidase 2. The absorption in the duodenum begins with iron uptake where iron passes through the membrane called enterocyte that line the intestine and is transferred to the plasma. The transferrin protein attaches to the iron and helps transport it throughout the body. Iron later passes to bone marrow where it is used to make hemoglobin and red blood cells which circulate in the body and help supply oxygen to organs and tissues. Next students, we will look into the sources of iron. They are categorized into three basic food groups. First group is which are rich in iron. Second group, normal iron content. Usually they are the vegetables and fruits and vegetables. And third one is this breads and cereals. Now look into this uh, picture and you can identify the foods rich in iron and which are having medium iron content and little lesser quantity of iron. And these are the plant based sources of iron. Next we will look into the recommended dietary allowances of iron. So far we were learning the importance of iron and we know iron is very much important for making hemoglobin and transport of oxygen. Now we will see how much iron is required per day. The body absorbs around 0 0.9 to 1.2 milligram of iron for men and 1.4 to 2.2 milligram for women per day. The RDA for adult men is 10 milligram per day and 15 milligram for women. The RDA for iron is based on the assumption that only 10% to 15% of the dietary iron is absorbed. On an average, men consume 17 milligram and women consume 12 milligram of iron per day. The analysis of the daily dietary intake for women has shown that most women do not consume the required RDA for iron that is around 15 milligram. Though not all women need this much iron, this is set high enough to meet the needs of nearly all women. Varying degrees of menstrual flow and wide difference in iron absorption also complicate the evaluation of dietary intakes of iron. For example, a person absorbing 20% of dietary iron could meet the RD through consumption of half as much iron as a person absorbing 10% of dietary intake. The iron requirements are determined by the iron balance studies. This method yields abnormally high values due to cumulative errors. Iron requirement is established by determining body iron loss through long term turnover studies in adult men using radioisotope of iron. Daily loss of body iron in well nourished adult men has been estimated to be 12 to 15 microgram per kg with an average of 14 microgram. This figure is also used for determining a basal loss of the body iron in women and children. The total body iron requirement of different group is computed as follows. This slide shows the computation of the iron for adult men, adult women and children and also for the pregnant and lactating women. This table presents the iron requirements of different groups are derived by the factorial approach in which the requirements for different physiological functions are added up basal loss, menstrual loss, expansion in blood volume, fetal growth and loss through milk are all taken into consideration as the case may be determined. Next we will look into the deficiency of iron. What happens if iron is deficient? If iron is deficient it will cause anemia and anemia is defined as a decrease in the number of red blood cells or the amount of hemoglobin in the blood. 
iron is needed by all cells in the body to utilize oxygen efficiently for its functioning. Majority of iron is present in RBC. When anemia occurs slowly, the symptoms are often vague and they may feel only tired, weak, shortness of breath and poor ability to exercise. The other symptoms include confusion, feeling like as though one is going to pass out and increased thirst. There may be other additional symptoms depending on the underlying causes. Iron deficiency anemia is a condition in which the body lacks enough red blood cell to transport oxygen rich blood to body tissues. It is also an essential mineral that is required to form hemoglobin and oxygen carrying protein inside red blood cells. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common form of anemia and it develops over time if the body does not have enough iron to manufacture red blood cells. Without enough iron, the body uses up all the iron it has stored in the liver, bone marrow and other organs. Once the stored iron is depleted, the body is able to make only very few red blood cells. If erythropoietin is present without sufficient iron, there is insufficient fuel for red blood cell production. The red blood cells that the body is able to make are abnormal and they do not have a normal hemoglobin carrying capacity as do normal red blood cells. Here is the pathophysiology of iron deficiency anemia. Stage 1 is indicated by decrease in serum ferritin levels and stage 2 is iron deficient erythropoiesis and stage 3 is the iron deficiency anemia. Now let us look into the symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. As we saw earlier it is the inability to carry oxygen, reduce red blood cells, chronic uh, recurrent infections, inability to heal, fatigue and reduced energy production etc. And the other signs and symptoms include uh, other than fatigue and weakness, chest pain, fast heartbeat or shortness of breath, headache, cold hands and feet, brittle nails, unusual craving for non-nutritive substances such as ice, dirt or starch and also poor appetite especially in infants and children and leg cramps on climbing stairs, altered behavior that is for example attention deficit disorder and dyspepsia with solid foods. Next we will look into the condition of toxicity of iron. This is not a as common as iron deficiency but iron overload can be serious since it may lead to toxic symptoms. Even one single dose of iron of 60 mg can be a life threatening to a one year old infant. Similar dose of iron but still exceeding than what is required over a long period cause problems. A form of iron toxicity has been observed in an African tribe that brew beer in iron pots. Some people of Mediterranean descent have a type of anemia caused by increased destruction of red blood cells, low dose iron therapy used to treat this disease can lead to toxicity symptoms. Repeated blood transfusion can lead to iron toxicity. Iron toxicity accompanies the genetic disease called hereditary hemochromatosis or it is an inborn error of metabolism. People with hemochromatosis absorb more iron. This is associated with a substantial increase in the activity of the membrane iron binding protein present in hepatocytes and intestinal absorptive cells that we had described earlier or which I had told you earlier. Thus, this protein may play a critical role in the development of hemochromatosis. In those persons with this disease, the amount of iron in the body eventually builds up to dangerous amounts, especially in the blood and liver. Some is also deposited in muscles, pancreas and heart. If this is not treated, it will lead to severe organ damage, especially to the liver and heart. Diabetes, liver cirrhosis, and a bronze skin pigmentation are other possible complications. Reducing the intake of 
iron containing and iron fortified foods and also avoiding cooking iron in cast iron cookware are preferable and not more than the required amount of vitamin C multivitamins without iron are prescribed. Also avoid foods and beverages that place an added stress on the liver such as alcohol and raw seafood. Drinking tea can help inhibit iron absorption. Tannin present in tea acts as a blocking agent. Next condition is the siderosis and this is again the nutritional iron overload which occurs due to high iron intake usually over 100 mg per day. Such intakes are usually due not to iron originally present in the food but to adventitious iron from iron vessels used in cooking and this is more frequently present in the preparation of alcoholic beverages. This condition is very common among the Bantu population of Jogunesburg who drink beer brewed from maize or sorghum in iron vessels. Siderosis is common among people who drink cheap wines made from iron vessels. A minor degree of overload probably has no adverse effect on health but it might be a contributing cause of liver cirrhosis. Dear students, till now we were learning about the micro mineral iron which is also a trace element present in our human body and this is very much essential for making hemoglobin and the hemoglobin which is essential for carrying oxygen throughout the body. Iron, if iron is not present in sufficient amount, it may lead to iron deficiency anemia which causes many problems among human being, especially among the adolescents. In some cases, iron toxicity may be present, but this is a very rare case.